right. Amen. We've got Ann in the chat room, and she says she is fixing to go into prayer for Rachel. Can you please have everyone be praying for her? Yes, we surely will. We go in a into prayer with you uh, uh, in agreement, sis. Amen. Thank you for informing us. I uh, didn't know anything was wrong. But we will begin to pray her and Jordan both. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's, uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we stand in agreement with those that are crying out for Sister Rachel and Pastor Jordan, Lord, you know the situation. You know the need. Uh, Lord, you know that uh, you and you alone can fix these problems, whatever they may be, God. We ask you to intervene, send forth the ministering holy angels, Lord, and count about your people, Lord, as we stand upon your promises and your word, God, knowing that you are a God that forsaketh us not, Lord, that you are near unto those that call unto you and your name. Amen. Praise God. God is good, and we're just going to stand upon the promises of God as God would just simply, um, simply encamp angels about his people. Amen. All right. We're praying that God's will be done in their life, both of their lives, whatever it may be that they have need of. We know the need giver. We know the one that can fix any problem, fix any anything wrong. Amen. He is awesome, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Just all you got to do is stand on the word and claim the victories that God said we could have. If we're born again, bathed in the blood. Amen. We definitely uh, have some promises. Amen. From God, not from man. Amen. So we're in prayer with them as they're praying. Uh, uh, Saving America, that's uh, evangelist Chris Cheney and his wife Ann are praying for uh, Rachel and Pastor Jordan. If you would, just pray. God knows the, the situation. And we'll just continue to pray that God intervene and take care of whatever the problem is. Hey, let's give a big shout out to uh, Pauline Eldridge Cheney. That's my wife, by the way. Good to see you in the house tonight. God bless you. Along with, hey, Carlin Adams. Uh, God bless you. Welcome in to the Gospel Music Jute Box. Amen. Tonight, throughout the program, we're going to be talking about is speaking in tongues. Well, is it from God or of the devil? Man, I get hit with so many questions over this that tonight we're going to try to tackle about five of those questions. Now, there's much more. There's no way we're going to get through all this in one program. I'm telling you. <laughs> Amen. Uh, it takes much, much and much prayer and fasting and, and just diving into the Word of God opening the tablet to your heart and asking God to write his word upon the tablet of your heart, my friend. Amen. <laughs> so hang in there with us. You know how we do it. We're going to be sharing music, testimonies, and the topic tonight, speaking in tongues. Is it from God or the devil? Now, without a doubt, hey, speaking in tongues is one of the most controversial uh, spiritual gifts mentioned in the New Testament. Is it from God or the devil? That's one of the questions I get asked quite often. Should believers ignore it, oppose it, or embrace it? Now, there's uh, many legitimate questions regarding the gift of tongues that deserve a, a thoughtful and biblical response. So we're going to try to tackle about five of them tonight. We'll see how far we get. Uh, you guys be praying for us also tonight. Uh, Carolyn uh, Adams there says, please pray for her tonight. So uh, if everybody would right now, go to the Lord in prayer for her. God knows the need. He knows the situation. For he knows us better than we uh, know herself. Amen. So, dear Heavenly Father, right now as we come in agreement for the need and in, in, in the life of Carl and Adams, uh, Lord, you, you, only you can fix this. Only you can take care. For, Lord, we're to cast our cares upon you, for you care for us. Tonight, we just ask, Lord, to, that you would send those ministering angels, Lord, that they would feel your presence, your touch, and, and know that you will never leave them, Lord. You'll never leave your children. You'll go further than mom and dad can go, further than a friend can go, for you're the friend indeed. Amen. Praise God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Uh, Woo, our precious Lord and Savior. Amen. Good to see Brother Donnie Sloan in the house, along with Brother Bobby Bohannon. He says, hey, all. Donnie says, hi, everyone. Hey, there's Sister Shirley in the house uh, up there in Pikeville, Kentucky. Yeah, we're talking about God's country, you know, where they got a pump of the sunshine in, <laughs> in between those hollers, you know. Hey, by the way, uh, guys, pray for me and my telephone. 
you know, it's got that talk and text, you know. You're supposed to be able to, you know, talk and hit print out your words. Well, I have a lot of problems with that. I don't think my phone understands hillbilly language too good. You know, like it can't even discern when I say, look here, phone, I'm funking me a thought. Now, you better straighten up. <clears throat> it kind of, you know, it puts up some kind of foreign language. I don't know. Maybe my phone is starting to speak in tongues. Amen. I don't know. God could anoint it. Hey, I don't know, man. I'm just saying. But uh, good to see Sister Vicky in the house. Amen. God bless. That is the, the pastor here at Soul Filling Station Worship Center right here at 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee. Amen. Hey, good to see Brother Irvin Taylor in the house. Man, That I tell you what, we call him the life and preacher around here. But I tell you right now, he is a blessing from God. If you're ever depressed, feeling down, lonely, I don't know, maybe you got a frown on your face and you just can't get it to a race. Call Brother Irvin or stop by down there in Herman, Tennessee, and spend about five minutes with him. If he ain't got you laughing, you better call preachers because then he, he, he done messed up. There's a reason we call him the life and preacher. The spirit of joy just flows and laughter from him. I tell you what, you can't stand it. In about 10 minutes, he'll have you laugh, and I'm telling you, he will. It's good. The anointing of God just flows through the brother and his wife, uh, 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 Spirit of Compassion Ministry. Uh, they We were blessed the other night. They came up here and sung and worshiped the Lord with us right here at the Soul Filling Station uh, Worship Center. Wow, man, we were blessed. I'm talking, hey, it was a Holy Ghost barn burning now i'm telling you it was man they set the place on fire god definitely opened up the windows of heaven and just poured out his blessings upon all of his children amen i'm telling you that was present in this place that night it was standing room only and god was just man ha, you had to be here because it's better felt than it is told <laughs> my god but listen let me let me let me invite everyone that's listening whether you be listening live or by way of the archive hey we do have a little worship center right here, 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee. It's out at Wind Ridge Estates. Now listen, it, on Saturday, starting about 5 o'clock, we got Bible study with Brother Bobby Bohannon and his wife, Sister Terry. And right after Bible study, uh, right around 7 o'clock, we try to go right into the worship service. And I'm telling you, that's with Pastor Eddie and, and, and guest, whomever he's invited or the Lord has sent. Right here at 7 o'clock, it, it just breaks in every Saturday to the worship uh, service. Amen. And I'm telling you, man, God is definitely moving. Not only here, he's moving everywhere. For he's God. Woo, he's God over there. He's God in there. He's God everywhere. Amen. But it's just an awesome uh, thing to be a part of what God's doing right here at the Soul Filling Station Worship Center. And saving America one soul at a time ministry is just set on fire by God. Ain't no doubt about it. Got an awesome vision to go and raise up more of these outreaches and worship centers across the United States states and then overseas man what an awesome vision the lord has give the people that he is putting with us here at saving america one soul at a time he's give us an anointing evangelist evangelist chris cheney man a matter of fact we got some good news ain't we brother donnie brother donnie just got off the phone with brother donnie sloan there i see him in the chat room uh man he's on fire he called me about some dates coming up in june we got some in march we're going to be uh 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 he was asking me, he was sharing with me, he said, now, they got a drummer. You reckon Brother Chris would rather uh, preach or play drums? I said, brother, he'd rather preach. <laughs> He ain't going to hurt him not to play drums. He'd rather, he's like me. He's got the gift to, to gab and share the word of God. That's his calling, to evangelize and, uh, you know, just, uh, well, preach the word of God to a lost and dying world as we reach out for those lost souls, those that are sick, afflicted, those that are rejected by most. Yes, I'm talking about the drug-infested alcohol field, those that are living in the lifestyle they call it alternate, but they're practicing homosexuality or lesbianism. I'm telling you, the boy's got a call on his life. When he preaches the word, it brings conviction. Yeah, to the center. I'm telling you. So I'm excited about what's going on. Things are happening up there in Knott County. Wow, and we're just honored and blessed to be a part of it. We're keeping our calendar open and waiting on Brother Donnie to get some dates affirmed and, and settled. And then we're going to send our evangelists up there. And uh, I think the 19th, our pastor's even going. That falls on a Saturday. That's March the 19th. Uh, we're, we're going up that way. Amen. Uh,
Okay, she says, okay, Eddie, I just talked to Rachel, and she said it's okay to tell everyone what pray for. She said, she So she went to the doctor today, and she is having a miscarriage. So keep praying for her and Jordan. Yes, dear Heavenly Father, another if that be so, another angel is going to be with Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, God's good. If, if it be so that she's having a miscarriage, if she's losing this child, we know that God's got a purpose and a plan. We know that, that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that baby, whoo, praise God, any baby, do you hear me? Belong to God. And he's got a purpose and a plan for this and souls are going to be one i'm telling you he gets the glory the honor and the praise for truly he is worthy i know we don't understand i know that there's it's a mystery some of the things god does listen his ways is above our ways do you understand god got the perfect plan there's something good coming out of all this and we're praying for them as we love them uh, i hope they know that if they need us we're here if they call us we'll be there anything we can do to help in this situation uh, right now the best thing to do is pray that uh, God comfort them. Yes, that God comfort them as he holds them in his arms and surrounds them with that whole family. The whole family just surrounds them with the love and, and, and the love, the ministering love of God. Amen. So um, let's just continue to pray, uh, you know, for them and, and, and what they're facing and what they're going through. Because we know they can go through this with God. I couldn't imagine dealing with anything like this without God on my side. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. All right. So, um, uh, <laughs> Sister uh, Carolyn, uh, Carolyn Adams here says, we need, we need good uh, feeling Holy Spirit where I live. So please come on here. <laughs> Amen. Well, just let us know where you live. We we do back porches. Uh, we got a tent. We're, well, we're getting a tent. We had one, but we're getting another one. And uh, hey, we do backyard revivals, front porch singings and preaching, living room services, house services. My God, when uh, when the call comes, we, we go. Uh, that's just how it is with us. Uh, that's our calling. Amen. Sometimes we get to bring the portable little uh, radio outfit and try to broadcast. If you've got internet, we love it uh, if we got access to it. If not, it's no problem. We do a lot of video and pictures and get the audio that we can share on our radio programs. But it, it don't matter about none of that. It matters about if you want to serve us, all you got to do, you see him right there saving America in the chat room. That's our evangelist. Well, his wife is typing for him. But that's our evangelist. Click up, get to know him, get a hold of him. Uh, sometimes I get to come with him. Sometimes I don't. Uh, it depends. Our schedules, where, what's going on. Sometimes I'm one way opening uh, as God uses me to open doors, uh, you know, for him to come through and the ministry to walk through. So just get a hold of our evangelist right there for saving America one soul at a time. That's evangelist Chris Cheney. And uh, Brother Donnie can help you there. He knows. Get a hold of Donnie. I believe you said you was in. That may be the one Donnie's talking to. I don't know. She lives near me. She's helping me in that. Yeah, upcoming meeting. Okay. Well, we'll just let you continue to work through Brother Donnie, and he'll get us the dates. And we thank God for Brother Donnie up there, man. Hey, he done got on fire, man. I'm telling you. Woo, talk about on fire for God. The brother is definitely on fire for God. Amen. And uh, so we're excited. So not to get no confusion, dates or nothing, sis. You, you just go ahead and work through uh, Brother Donnie. He takes care of that up there for us now. He's helping us get things up there going. Hey, we're keeping our calendar open till he gets all these dates confirmed. But now we move in a moment's notice. I know that if you want church at your house, hey, we can uh, the evangelist. We send him; he be on his way tomorrow. <laughs> if he ain't preaching somewhere, we we send him to preach somewhere wherever he's asked to go, or God sends him. Amen. And if he's asked, that's God sending him without a doubt. When somebody's hungry for the word of God and they're saying, "Hey, come to me, come here," we need we need a Holy Ghost filled revival. Praise God. We want to see that happen as quickly as we possibly can. Because listen, we don't have the promise of tomorrow. I mean, their soul's hanging in the balance. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So you guys just keep on getting it settled, get all the dates in order, and just let us know, and we'll be there. All I asked, all I ever asked is if I come, please have baloney. I'm a baloney-eating preacher, man. Hey, this bishop likes baloney. I'm telling you, I love baloney. Baloney, baloney, baloney. I'm a baloney man. To, I, I mean, 
you know, they say chicken and anointing goes together. No, man, baloney and anointing goes together. You hear what I'm saying to you? All right, guys, give this a listen. We're going to be right back tonight. We're going to be talking about, well, is speaking in tongues from God? Huh? Or from the devil? Hmm. Love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. I will be uh, sharing on it. Now, when I go in to the teaching, if the phone rings, you know, I don't know if I'll get an answer it because I got to stay focused. So I may have to wait till in between the teaching. You know, we, we'll answer the phone. Hey, by the way, wait a minute. Whoop, 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 whoop. Put the break on. Put the break on. I was supposed to try to call Brother Philip. Okay, let me see. Let's do that. Brother Donnie, I'm like you, brother. I'm I'm beginning to forget. All my little notes is getting mixed up here on my desk. <laughs> I ain't got no secretary. And, boy, if you just know my filing system, you would really pray for me. I mean, for real. You would really, really pray for me. All right, let's go over here to the phone before we go to the uh, testimony side of things. And, uh, and let's get... Uh, Let's see if we can get a hold of Brother Philip before we jump right into the program. Well, praise the Lord, brother. How you feeling this evening? I'm feeling pretty good, brother. Praise the Lord. All right. Pretty good. Well, yeah. we want to hear some good news, so lay it on us. Well, I still ain't never found nothing yet. That's good news. That's good news, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I reckon, as far as I know right now, they they finally decided to go ahead and do that heart catheter there tomorrow, you know. To, uh, they want to make for sure, but I, I, I know that. I know... I know they ain't going to find nothing, you know, not in my heart, no ways. Amen. Hey, I need to I need to let you know, if you would, be praying for Sister Rachel and yeah. Pastor Jordan. Uh-huh. Uh, they, uh, the post there said uh, they believe she's having a miscarriage. Oh, my God, no. So, uh, you know, just God God take care of that and comfort them. And, yeah, and we oh, know yeah. if, if that be so and that happens, we know that God's got a plan. Amen. Amen. God's got a plan. Amen. Uh, always, he's always got a plan. You know, I, his, his plan's always right. Bro. Amen. I know you love him, and you there in the hospital. I didn't know if you had heard anything no, about that no, yet. I, I hadn't heard nothing about it, you know. Well, now, you, you be praying for him throughout the evening. And so how you feeling right now? Well, I'm feeling good. I've been up walking around all over the floor, you know, all the way around, around the floor here, sixth floor, and, Doing pretty good. You, you know, remember yeah. what happened last time you was in the hospital when I come down there, don't you? Uh, you jumped up out of that bed with all them old things hooked up on you, and we was going down them yeah, aisles yeah, of praying yeah, for people. Yeah, yeah we did. I we? said, look here, God used one sick man. Go pray for the other sick. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. God uh, works. I ain't, in, one, I ain't one bit past that right now. So <laughs> you know, I need prayer. I sure ain't. Amen. Uh, Sister Shirley said she tried calling you, but it was busy, so you probably getting a lot of calls. Yeah, yeah, I've been trying to get things situated, you know, and stuff, but uh, God's in control, Brother Eddie. You know, Amen. What, you know, uh, I thank God that uh, uh, Brother Willie called me today. Amen. And, uh, awesome. Brother Greg called me today, too, you know. I thank God for the love of my brothers and sisters, you know what I'm Amen, saying? Amen, buddy. You well loved, ain't no doubt. Uh, Amen. I do. Uh, it, you know, I mean, I, I, Willie called me on his program today, you know, and stuff. And, and Brother Greg called me this evening or sometime about four or so. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I just wanted to get, uh, give me a word of encouragement and uh, lift me up and help me along the way. Amen. You know? I thank God for that, you know. Amen. That, that shows the love of God in people, Brother Eddie. You know what I'm saying? Amen. It Amen. Really and how how can we love the Lord whom we haven't seen if we don't love our brother whom we have seen. You there you saying? go. Sound like the word to me. Come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not there, is it, brother? You know what I'm saying? No, okay. I hear you. If we don't love our brother, then we don't love the Lord. Because God is love. Amen? I hear you, brother. He's love, all love, pure love. Amen? Amen. 
99.99% pure love. Amen. <laughs> Woo, God's good. And besides him, there is none other. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, yeah, uh, we'll be praying for Sister Rachel. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll try to get a hold of my wife and get a hold of Brother Jimmy and them, get a hold of Brother Tim and have him have the church be praying too. Yeah, yeah. You know, have, have. I know at this point in time, you know, all the prayers we can get, Amen. Uh, you know, as well needed. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Uh, Amen. One put a thousand to fight. Two put what? Ten thousand to fight. You know what I'm saying? Amen. There's Amen. power in numbers. Power I hear numbers. you. Amen. I hear you. We're just praying that God's will be done in their life and that He comfort them, lead them, and continue to guide them. Amen. Where He would have them to go. And That's if it be that, that the you know they're having uh, going through this, it, it God's got a purpose and a plan, and there'll be souls won. There'll be an awesome testimony come out of this. Uh, oh yeah, because they be truly God's will. You know that, that 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 is to be so. We know where the little baby's at. Amen. Amen. Uh, it might not can come back to us, but praise God, we can go to where it's at. Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the way it is. Uh, okay, they want me to share. Uh, I think uh, somebody's got it. Let's see, Shirley's got it. Uh, the phone number, Moore's wanting to call you. Are you up for plenty of calls? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. man, well, we're going to share your number because you just need to be loved. You know what I mean? Uh huh. So we're going to try to get. I think Sister Shirley, if she's still in there, I think she's got it. I've got it here. Uh, just, I can give I'm, it to you. I'm a one finger typer, man. It's. Uh, one. It'd, it'd be one six zero six. Uh huh. Two one eight. Sixteen thirty three. Anybody? Okay, let me make sure I got it right. One six zero six. Uh huh. Two one eight. Uh huh. Sixteen thirty three. Yes, sir. That's it. All right. They can call. They can call up till ten o'clock. You know, I think they cut the. Switchboard off at of ten. They won't let it. You know, let them ring in the room up eight or ten. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, so it's uh, yeah, there. Irvin put it in there. Hey, Amen. Thank you, brother Irvin. I got it in there. I'm one finger typer, man. Like real slow. <laughs> you know, hard for me to multitask here with all this stuff and equipment. But we're well, getting you know, we getting a little better at it. <laughs> that really uplifts us, brother. You know. Hey, Amen. For brothers and sisters in the Lord to call us and tell us, hey, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. I hear you, you know, man. It does. Uh, you know. We're supposed to be like that good Samaritan, Brother Eddie. Uh -huh. Find somebody in a ditch, we're supposed to pick them up and try to get them help. You know what Amen. I'm saying? Amen. We ain't supposed to walk out on by them and say, ah, somebody else will help them. You know what I mean? I hear you, man. That's not, that's not God's plan. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, so, I hear you. Yeah, we got to help one another. Pray for one another and lift one another up so we all can make it home together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, I believe I got a good sister in here working on me right now because she said that's right. She evidently, <laughs> she's hearing what I'm telling you. She's agreeing with it. <laughs> is, she, is she poking you with a needle? No, she ain't. Uh, she just taking blood pressure. Ah, uh, tell her I wanted her to poke you with a needle. Gee whiz! Yeah. I can't have no fun if I didn't hear him holler ouch. Hey, that's, that's all they've done, poke me a needle, my brother. You need it, every bit of it. Yeah, I, probably, I probably do, but you know, hey. it don't feel too good, though. Uh, uh, no, it don't. All <laughs> right, my friend, you got anything you want to say or do before we let you go? We don't want to wear your plum out, but we want you to obey the Lord. Well, I just want to say, praise God, everybody. Just keep on keeping on for the glory of God, no matter where you're at. Let your light so shine that this whole world may see. Your good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Amen. Yes, amen. Praise amen. God. Keep on keeping on. No matter you might be in McDonald's, you might be in Walmart, you might be in the grocery store. But praise God. Do what God would have you to do. If He tells you to run that aisle and begin to preach, preach. If He tells you to sing, sing, honey. Look if He out. tells you to jump two foot high, you jump two <laughs> foot high. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> yes. Just obey God because yeah. obedience is better than any sacrifice that we could ever make. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I, I love everybody, Brother Eddie. Well, Brother, we love you. Our prayers are with you. If you would, please remember Sister Rachel and Pastor Jordan Honeycutt. Pray okay. for them. And, um, brother, know that we love you. I, I will call Brother Tim right now and have him put on a prayer line up there at the Guiding Light Community Church, you know. Thank you. And have him call other people and be praying. Yes. And we'll, you know. All right. Pray God's will be done in the situation. All know? right. God Amen. knows best. We don't. Yes, he does. 
we speak life, and life is God's will. Amen. 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 Praise God, brother. Well, we love you. We'll let you go back and uh, let them take your blood pressure for you. Get all happy there, and they have to run you down. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we love you. God bless you. And uh, I keep you posted on what's going on, you know, which I don't think they're going to find nothing in my heart. I believe it's all in another part of uh, all, in, uh, all in where I had that back surgery. And, Could be. Um, well, God's taking I, care of it. I believe that. Amen. Anyway it goes, he's still taking care of it. Amen. Praise God. I just give him all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, of Brother Eddie, for it's all due to him. Woo, God Amen. is good, I'm telling you. Amen. So uh, I, all, all right, brother. And tell them I'll in the chat room and every one of them. I love them dearly from the bottom of my heart. All right, brother. We miss you in there, so you're going to have to get back up now and get out there. I hear you. Woo! <laughs> Praise God. All right, brother. We love you, man. Love you too, brother. And good God night. Bless and God have bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow. Praise God. Amen. Man of God on fire for God. Brother Philip Williamson up there in Pikeville uh, Hospital right now. So we we posted a number there. Brother Irvin posted it. I posted it. Uh so grab that number, give the brother a call, and please remember to continue to pray for uh, Sister Rachel and Pastor Jordan Honeycutt. Amen. As uh, whatever they may face, we know they're going to face it with God. Uh, just encourage them to hold on right now to that unchanging hand of the great I Am, even amongst all the confusion and don't know what's going on. But beyond a shadow of a doubt, God's will is going on. And uh, they're not alone. We stand with them. If they need anything, uh, you guys can pass this message along to them or, or whoever's keeping up with them at, at this time. If, if they need anything, if there's anything this ministry can do, all they have to do is let us know. Amen. All right. We love them. We'll continue to pray. We'll be back in a minute. Tonight, throughout the program, we're going to be talking about, well, the gift of speaking in tongues. Is speaking in tongues from God? Or the devil. We're going to try to answer at least five questions I got in the email uh, that came to me over by people on Facebook and different uh, avenues that uh, heard some of our services here at the worship center. And they wanted to know what language that was. So anyhow, it's a heavenly language. We'll be talking about that as soon as we get back into that side of the program. But for right now, give this a listen and be blessed. Well, hold on. We're getting another phone call. Uh, hello, you've got the gospel music jukebox. Who do we have on that end? Uh, you got this brother Irvin Taylor down here in his Harriman, Tennessee. I'm down in the valley. Down in the valley. You'll be on the mountaintop for long. Come on, brother. Amen. <laughs> Amen on that now. Hey, is it, is it as cold up there as it is down here? It's cold. <clears throat> Well, that's good. Hey, I just want to say to uh, Pastor Jordan and uh, Sister Rachel that when me and Sandy was starting our family, we uh, we had two miscarriages. She miscarried a set of twins, and then she missed our first one was a, a little girl, and uh, she just wasn't fully developed. She didn't have no lungs or anything like that. And uh, we get to thinking about it today, and, and you know, it's upsetting, but... Uh, God knows what he's doing, and uh, sometimes we don't understand it, but it's just God knows what he's doing. And But if she ain't already had that miscarriage, the God that I serve will make everything okay. Amen. I don't know about you all, but God made us, and amen, he can take care of us, he can heal us. Amen. But my point is this, is we ain't supposed to let pains get us down. I know it hurts, and I know everybody feels bad, but we just got to keep praising God and keep it going. Amen. Uh, I've heard several people mention they need prayers. Amen. We just need to start praying for everybody because things are things are going on right now that shouldn't even be going on, and 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 we just need to be a praying for everybody. Uh, heard you mention bologna sandwich. If you go to Kentucky, Ooh, you got to have bologna sandwich. I love bologna. And I I, and, I, and I put on our biscuits and gravy, and she comes back and said, well, I can't make gravy. I guess I guess Hardee's will just catch us. Hardee's, I have to do it, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> Woo, glory, but hallelujah. 
I just wanted to call in and say, uh, uh, God bless all, and, and I hope everybody has a good warm night. And hey, and just be a, and just and just pray and pray for me. Hey man, as soon as we get all these dates confirmed, I'm going to call you. Uh, you going with us tonight, teenth? Thank you. Well, <laughs> either I call in the vehicle with somebody, or I might even ride with that brother Greg. Dawson. Oh you no, that's know. a uh, that's a scary uh, thought. <laughs> but uh, I'll either ride with somebody, or somebody can ride with me because. Uh, Sandy said them one day trip she just can't handle. She, yeah, I hear you, so, man. It's rough, ain't it? Amen. And uh, she's gonna stay home with the kids and said you just go and have fun. I hear you. Well, yes. praise the Lord. We're excited about what God's doing, brother Donnie's on fire up there. Just got off the phone with him before the program, and he is definitely getting some dates lined up and getting things in order. So uh, we're looking forward to the nineteenth. Uh, they're 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 gonna get a bigger building. We're getting a bigger building because it's going to be blowed out standing room. I'm I telling you. It's going to be an awesome time in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yep. All right, yep. brother. We can hey. have it outside. <laughs> I hear you. We did the last one. Half of them was outside. <laughs> well, now, you know, you know, it might be cold, but Holy Ghost gets to work and I need to heat it up real fast. I hear you. Turn up the fire. Praise God. All right, my friend. Turn the heat up. <laughs> Amen. Well, we love you, and you tell Sister Sandy we love her and the whole family, and we can't wait to get to see you, and uh, just let God be God, my friend. See, now, I, well, let me say this. Y'all, we all prayed for Sister Sandy, you know, my wife, when we was up there Saturday night, uh-huh. and she and she got her voice back, and I don't know what you've done that for, because I was <laughs> blessed. Well, you need prayer now? <laughs> You, your ears or something? I mean, you know, I don't know. Just saying. We love her. We want to hear what she got to say. So we'll just pray right, we for you. you we love you, my man. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, my goodness. If he don't get you to laughing, honey, I'll tell you, your life bone is broke. Amen. Uh, we love Brother Irvin to death. Excited that he's going to go with us. I believe Brother Greg Dotson's going to shoot up there with us the 19th. And, oh, my God, just, uh, brother, they're going to be a tassel of them coming uh, out of Tennessee, heading up to the mountains of Kentucky. Uh, we're excited. Hey, Amen. Can't wait to see what the Lord is going to do. Praise God. All right, give this a listen, and I'll be back. Uh, remember, somewhere, yeah, soon, throughout the program, we're going to be talking about well, is speaking in tongues from God or the devil? Hmm, interesting. I was asked that question, so I'm just passing it along. And <laughs> we'll be talking about it in a minute. Give this a listen and be blessed. Kings and Lord of Lords, this is called the Lamb, the Lion, and the King. Y'all know what's up? Come on, right there. Here we go, here we go. To the slaughter, Jesus never opened his mouth. From the child to the crucifixion, the to the grave there was laid out. After three days in the garden, too, I can hear the angels say, As a lamb came forth, as a lion, and the lion became the king. You won't find him again at the whipping post, standing next so meek, and he won't be nailed to a rugged cross through his hands and through his feet. There'll never be another. The cause they don't have to prove one thing That the nail became the line and the line became the king You know Jesus lived to splendor To live on earth with man My most he was rejected Because he came forth as a lamb But the day Soon approaching, that every eye shall see the Lamb and Lion of Judah has been crowned the King of Kings. You won't find him again at the whipping post, sending death so meek, and he won't be there to a rugged cross through his hands and through his feet. No, there'll never be another Calvary cause they don't have to prove one thing. The Lamb and the Lion became the Lion and the Lion became the King.
Praise God. I'm telling you, God is awesome. Amen. Hey, we need to keep praying for, I see a bunch already is praying for Shirley there. Sister Shirley, her blood pressure is just crazy. And she's got to go to the hospital in the morning for more tests. So please continue to remember her as we speak life over this, sis, in the name of Jesus. As we plead the blood, we stand upon the word and the promises of God. We are healed according to woo, the word of God. By his stripes, uh, we are healed. Let's claim victory as we stand in agreement with Sister Shirley Collins. Amen. Praise God. God is awesome. We do pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Woo. My God, our precious Lord and Savior. I'm about to have me a Holy Ghost fit right in this room tonight. I'm telling you. Amen. God is uh, good. Besides him, there is none other. Praise God. All right, guys. Got a thing here. Okay. Uh, wanted me to answer about what am I doing with the change and why am I taking time off the radio. Okay. Well, a couple of things. Hey, I'm glad you brought that to my attention. Amen. Uh, before we jump into the topic of is speaking in tongues from God or the devil, let me get this out of the way. Amen. Uh, well, you know, me keeping up with so much is really working me a lot. So I prayed. Brother Willie, he called the other day and asked me about, you know, asking people and, and myself to call his prayer line. So I thought, you know, I really need to help him. I, I want to help him. You know, when a brother asks you to go a mile, you're supposed to try to go two, twine. You know what I'm saying? So I started thinking about how the best way that I could help him. And, you know, God put it on my heart. It would help him and help me if I just transfer all of our testimony calls that come in. You know, I don't have a lot, but but it don't matter. If there's one, it's worth it. Amen. And uh, I thought, well, I can transfer for them to Brother Willie and we'll help him and be blessed, and that helps free me up to concentrate on the live line and more programming because we're getting ready to go 24-7, and I'm working on a lot of things. Amen. Uh, hey, that reminds me. Check out the new program, In the Pulpit. Remember, it's an old program. We're doing it in a new way now, In the Pulpit. It, it'll be airing between most of the regular programs. Now, listen, the, the gospel music jukebox will be on in its regular scheduled times. Sometimes it'll be me. Sometimes it'll be somebody else. Amen. But but the, the program is doing awesome. It's me. There's some things I'm checking in my life, uh, things I'm, I'm praying about. I, I, I've let down as far as the radio program goes. I've been uh, doing other things and, and spending time in other parts of the ministry, uh, you know, 
uh, so I've got to stay focused, and uh, I've just got to have some time to get myself back in line with God. That simple. So please pray for me uh, that I make the the right godly decisions that I don't lean to myself. You know, one one of the faults I have is I'm. You know, it really is. You know, it says confess your faults one to another, and one of the faults I got uh, is that sometimes I get overbearing. Uh, I almost catch myself really trying to push people to do something even if God's not pushing them in that direction um, you know so I, I got to work on that and, and I'm going to do that I, I'm going to do that with your prayers and the help of the Lord I'm going to get that part of my life took care of that is one of my faults and uh, I know that if we confess our faults one to another, uh, amen, and pray for one another that we'll be healed. I know the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. There's plenty of people in here that love the Lord, and I know that you're praying for me and uh, the direction of this ministry. Uh, now, I'm talking about the radio. Not Saving America is doing great, man. Ain't got no problems. Everybody's doing their thing now. Everybody's falling more in love with Jesus, and everybody's just trying to do more. And the Soul Filling Station Worship Center, it's growing. It's being blessed. It's been packed out and blowed out every service. I'm telling you, evangelist is getting himself read up, steadied up, and ready to run out there and get things done. Amen. Uh, the radio side is where I'm lacking. So pray for me. Amen. Uh, good to see see Tom, Brother Tom Long in the in the house tonight. Uh, God bless you, my friend. Amen. Brother Cheney, we will pray God speak to you clearly. Amen. Love you, friend. All right. Thank you. My God, thank you for the prayers. Praise God. <clears throat> Just a lot of things going on. So now I want to give you a number, and this is Brother Willie Grizzle, the House of Prayer testimony line number. And and probably by, by about midnight, my testimony line will be done. It'll be shut off. So write this number down. I'm going to try to tap it, type it, type it. Well, I thunk me a thought, didn't I? Hey, man, I'm going to try to tap, type it. Shoo, my tongue getting all twisted here. I'm happy. I'm excited about tonight, about the program. <clears throat> this is going to be the last one I do, uh, me personally, for a little while, a day or two. That, but the radio goes on. Now, don't take it the wrong way, please. Don't think, oh, no, what's going on? The gospel music jukebox is going to shut down. No, it's not. It's growing. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, it's growing, man, and it's multiplying, and, and we're getting uh, very blessed in the pulpit to have other ministers give us material. And uh, brother, we're going to be sharing brother Willie, uh, a house of prayer in there. We're going to be sharing consumed by far ministry in there. Oh my God! And uh, just many others. So just keep praying. But write this number down. I'm going to try my best to put it here in the chat room. Let me be patient with me. <laughs> uh, 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 I know I'm slow, but it'd be all right. Praise God. Uh, this is, we will be passing this new testimony line number uh, on as much as we possibly can and encouraging you to use it. Please use it and help Brother Willie fill his uh, airtime uh, there. He's getting ready to grow. He's going to go very soon uh, from 45-minute program into the three-hour program. So please help him. He's going to need all the help he can get and all your prayers. Uh, we're praying for him, and we're going to try to help him with everything we can. Sometimes I'm a little slow. He asked for some songs a while back, and I forgot about them. And uh, I, I don't know if he got hurt at me a little bit or not, but he prayed for me. Uh, finally, he reminded me, and, and I did get them to him quickly then. Sometimes, listen, friends, you got to remind me. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, a, I'm multitasking like, like, like you wouldn't believe. Things going on, things are happening, and, and I don't have nobody to write for me right now to help me keep notes. And I'm not very good at organizing by no means. I mean, those of you that have been here know this studio uh, is, well, I know where everything is, but I don't think nobody else could find nothing. <laughs> My filing system is, <clears throat> well, it's not hard to describe it because it's just, uh, you know, everything goes in the floor. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty simple, ain't it? Oh, my goodness. I'm telling on myself. I've done, uh, I need prayer. Let me get this number wrote in here. Amen. So I can get this out there and uh, we can help Brother Willie. It helps us. It helps him. We're coming to everybody just trying to help and encourage one another. Amen. To just simply continue to obey God. Praise God. All right. Let me get the rest of it. Uh, I'm about there. Man, I told you I'm slow. Now I got to make sure I got it right. It's 1 270 681 8098. 
All right, I'm going to try to post that in the room. All right, there it is. You see that one two seven zero six eight one eight zero nine eight. All right, that's going to be the testimony line that I'm referring everybody to. Now, Brother Greg Dodson by Consumed by Fire Ministry, he doesn't have a testimony line. He does have a, a live call-in number, if you want to call it. Uh, I don't have the number laying here with me, but I'm going to get it so I can share that with you uh, because, uh, you know, that's what he does. Now, Brother Willie, he's got a pre-recorded line, and that's it right there. He also has a live line. I think he uses his cell phone. Um uh, I don't know that number. I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head. I don't. It's. Uh, I'll get it, oh, and post it in another program. Amen. But um, praise God. But that number, 1270-681-8098, um, I still encourage you all, everyone listening, live or by way of the archive, please call and share a testimony once a day. Be faithful with that and watch what God does for you. I, I, I know you don't like phones, I, apparently, but I'm telling you, if you'll break into that new area, you'll see. You'll see that God will bless you to be when you're faithful with the least of things. My God, God makes you ruler of much. I'm telling you, when you share in your testimony, not only are you being an overcomer with the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony, but my God, you're encouraging someone. You're letting the world know that God's not dead. He's alive, and he lives forevermore, and he's working actively in your lives. Amen? So that's powerful. That You can call that pre-recorded testimony line 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year and leave him a message. He'll get to it and he'll share it on the radio program House of Prayer right out of Scottsville, Kentucky. Amen. That's Evangelist Willie Grizzle, House of Prayer. That's the testimony line I'm going to encourage you to go use and uh, help him fill them airways with the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So it's one two seven zero six eight one eight zero nine eight. Pick it up, give it a dial, give him a call two or three times a day. Encourage him, share your testimony, Hey, sing a song. I think you get three minutes. If his is like mine was, you get three minutes to leave a, a testimony, prayer request, or just shout howdy. He'd love to hear from you, I'm sure. Amen. All right. With that said, <laughs> praise God. Let me tell you, you're always welcome. Anytime we're on the air live, you can call right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. Whether it don't matter what program it is, if we're on the air live, I'm going to have try to have somebody by the phone. If not, leave a message. But this is the live call-in number to the studio, 931 931- Two five zero four three six six. You can call that anytime you see the little red thing on says on the air live. Amen. When we're live, that'll get you directly right here to the gospel music jute box. Hey, if you'd like to write us a letter um, or send us your prayer request through the, the mail, the regular mail, you know, where you put a stamp on an envelope and all that, and you go out and you put it in the mailbox. Our mailing address is 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, 38571. Once again, 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee. So, put the, you know, lick the stamp, you know, the old-fashioned mail. Or if not, and you'd like to email us, amen, we, we'd love to hear from you. The Gospel Music Jukebox at gmail.com. So there are many ways to get a hold of us, amen. Uh, so just uh, take advantage of one of them roads. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, good to see Sister Rachel in the house. She says, hello, everyone. Love you all. Thank you all for praying. Sis, we love you. If there's anything you need, you let us know. If we need to come down there and cry with you, sit with you, pray with you, it don't matter. We're here for you, sis. We love you and Pastor Jordan with all of her heart. You're part of us. We're connected through and by the body of Christ to the marrow of the bone. We love you. I know this is God's will, she says, and this little soul is more blessed than any of us. Amen. Amen. So I'm taking it. You have lost. It, it is a miscarriage, and you have lost uh, the baby. Well, you ain't lost it. You just give it back to God. Ain't no such thing as losing it because you're going to be with it again. Amen. We'll even get to be with it one of these days if we hold on and endure to the end. Amen. She says, I know this is God's will, and this little soul is more blessed than any of us. Wow. My God, what an awesome, awesome witness right there. God is awesome, and besides him, there is none other, my friend. Give this a listen. And uh, yes, in the process of it, oh my! Well, we're, 
we're with you. You're not alone. If you need to talk, call some of these women. Get on the phone. Don't don't listen. If you pastor, if you need to call, get on the phone. Call my cell phone. Call one of these brothers here in the in the room and uh, talk. You're not alone, my friend. You, we know that you know God's there with you, but we're with you in spirit too, my friend. We're there with you. Our hearts go out for you, but we know that God is awesome and He's got a plan, a purpose. Amen. He's got a He's got a plan and a purpose. I'm telling you, we love you, sis. Hold on, endure. God's good. Woo! Praise God. All right, give this a listen, and we're going to be right back. You're listening to the Gospel Music Jute Box. Praise the Lord. We just go to the rock. 
hey, this is me and my boys doing this one. We send it out to Sister Rachel. Know this, any and all of you listening, whether it be live or by way of the archive, if you ever need any of us here from the ministry Saving America One Soul at a Time, all you got to do is ask. Pray us in. We'll come. We'll, we'll, we'll be there with you, for you. We'll, whatever the need is, if you need anyone from this ministry, please just let us know. And, uh, hey, we'll, we'll come and just, uh, we'll just love you. Bottom line, be there for you, love you, but you got to let us know. Amen. Hey, Sister Rachel, send this out to you. I remember you telling me that this was one of your favorite ones. So give this a listen, girl. We love you. And Pastor Jordan, you know without a doubt we love you, my friend. We're praying that God send you this way and that you bring a word down here to the Gospel Music Jukebox live right here from the studio. And uh, just simply come on out of Kentucky down here into Tennessee and obey the Lord. You got an open door here, my friend. We love you. Give this a listen. Be blessed. We'll be right back. Amen. Just put your hand in the hand. Whew, praise God. Continue to hold on to the unchanging hand of the great I Am. Don't matter what we face, let's just face it with Jesus. Amen. He has equipped us and given us all that we need to endure all things. We have all power over the enemy. So don't let the devil confuse you, trick you in your mind. Put on that helmet. Woo, ask God to weld that helmet of salvation to your head, my friend. Praise God. All right, guys, talking about tonight, I got to jump into the topic just a little bit here. We're about to get carried away, having a good time just worshiping the Lord. Hey, man, hey, I mean, without a doubt, speaking in tongues is, well, is one of the most controversial uh, spiritual gifts mentioned in the New Testament. Is it from God or the devil, the question I was asked? 
I mean, you know, should believers ignore it, oppose it, or embrace it? Now listen, there are many legitimate questions regarding the gift of tongues that deserve a, a thoughtful biblical response. And tonight we're going to be talking, uh, try to answer at least five of them. Uh, we may go more, may, it may, I don't know. We're just going to put it in God's hands. Amen. Uh, praise God. Uh, amen. I love what my wife said there. Amen. We can face anything with Jesus by our side. All things. Amen. Praise God. Woo, what an awesome God we do serve. All right, the first question, kind of simple to me, because it was, is speaking in tongues from God or the devil? Well, if you got your Bibles with you tonight, I want you to go over there to the book of Mark, chapter 16, and I really want you to look at verse 17. Now, you know, the, to me, it's an important, it's important. You need to know, uh, when it comes about speaking in tongues, what I feel Jesus said about it as I look at this verse. You see, he, his words there in Mark 16, verse 17, he, he says, And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will, you know, cast out demons or drive out demons, depending on which, which one you're looking at. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, so if somebody could go over there and get that and post it in the room for us, that'd be a great help. Uh, amen. Mark 16, verse 17. Um, you know, he's talking about they will speak in new tongues. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll cast out demons and they'll speak in new tongues. Uh, have you ever thought about what those new tongues was? Now, that don't mean old languages. New means new. Hey, man, something that's not been done before. New tongues. Uh, Jesus declared that tongues uh, is, is a supernatural sign that can, can and should accompany everyone who believes in him. Now, God, listen, he don't give his children bad gifts. So we shouldn't fear or, uh, well, ridicule the gift of tongues, my friend. If you don't understand it, you need to simply pray to the wisdom giver. Amen. You need to, if you lack wisdom in an area or you don't understand a part of the word of God or you're not walking in that particular place or, well, maybe you're not read up, you're not prayed up. Pray, pray, pray. If you lack wisdom in an area, you pray. Amen. Uh, <laughs> the next question I got kind of goes along with that, but it, they simply asked me, are people uh, making it up when they speak in tongues? You know, so that really got me to thinking. So let me share with you a little bit right here. Because the gift of tongues is, it's a known, listen, it's a heavenly language. Unknown to the speaker that um, en enables him uh, to hear the you know, to communicate directly with God. Look in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. You know, where uh, Paul is talking about if I speak in, in tongues of men and of angels. You know, I want you to catch the word angels. You see, to me, when you receive the gift of tongues uh, in a split second, the Holy Ghost, well, let's just say downloads a language into your spirit without you ever having to learn it. <laughs> That's just a, a simple way. So I got to doing some research uh, uh, about it. And and in way back in 2006, researchers at the University of uh, Pennsylvania, they took brain images of five people while they spoke in tongues. Their research was published in the New York Times, my friend. The leader of the study team was Dr. Andrew Newberg, who arrived at this conclusion. We noticed a number of changes that occurred, you know, functionally in the brain. Our finding of activity in the front lobe during the practice of speaking in tongues is fascinating. Because these subjects truly believe that the Spirit of God is moving through them and controlling them to speak. Now, our brain images, image research shows us that these subjects are not in control of the usual language centers. During this activity, which is con con uh, consent with their uh, description of lack of intentional control while speaking in tongues. In other words, they took the picture of the brain while they were speaking in the gift of tongues and the parts of the, that tells the, you know, the brain tells to, to speak and all that, it was not activated. 
it was laying asleep. You see, when they when they prayed in tongues, their frontal lobes, um, that willful part of the brain, we used to think and control what we do when uh, they were quiet while they were doing this experiment. The language center of the brains, the part we use to speak in our, well, native language. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're quiet as well. Um, you know, the people, they were quiet. You know, those, those parts of the brain were just showing no activity, but yet they were speaking in tongues. Wow, look here what's happening. But the people were, were not in a trance. They were fully aware of what was happening. The researchers, uh, man, was just uh, blown away. I mean, they were absolutely uh, flabbergasted. You know, a hillbilly word, you know. <laughs> Amen. Um, now, like I said, they weren't in a trance. They were fully aware of what was happening. And the researchers was just, uh, wow, unable to pinpoint which part of the brain was controlling this behavior of speaking in tongues. Now, Dr. Newberg went on to say the amazing thing was how the image supported people's interpretation of what was happening. You see, the way they described it and what they believe is that God. They believe that God is talking through them as they're praying. The Holy Ghost knows how to pray for you even when you don't. But anyway, speaking in tongues is clearly not a, a fabricated language as, as the scientist theirself has helped confirm. Now, we know that. Those of us that are born again, you know, the bath in the blood, we know that there's times that we don't know how to pray. And the Holy Ghost will make mourns for us. It'll cry out to God. You know, uh, uh, amen. So, you know. We shouldn't go against what we don't understand until we pray. If we lack wisdom, we better be praying to the wisdom giver. Amen. And that's God. Praise God. All right. So is speaking in tongues um, of God or of the devil? That, that, that was the main question, the first question I was hit with the other night. Now, we know it's from God, but now, does is all tongues of God? No, the devil mocks and mimics. There's people that does not have the gift of tongues that do just chatter and make up uh, some kind of uh, weird noises and do do uh, things with their mouth. But, but now, if it's of God, then the Spirit of God bears witness. You see, hey, really think about it. The gift of tongues was the most common spiritual gift in the New Testament church. Uh, look there. The Bible tells us right there in Acts 2, I believe it is verse 4, that, that you know, talking about the, the, the day of Pentecost, you know. I mean, I think 120, wasn't it? 120 uh, spoke in tongues in the upper room. You see, because all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, we don't know if they all received the gift of faith or of healing or of discernment, but we know for a fact that they all uh, of them received the gift of tongues. We know that because it says so. Go over there and look at Acts chapter 2, verse 4 there, and we'll be right back. This is Sister Terry from Cookville Calling. I'm going to read you from 1 Corinthians 13:10 through 13. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly. But then, face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. That's love. The perfect refers to the next stage, the eternal age when the Messiah reigns. Paul uses the analogy of infancy versus adulthood to explain the contrast between our present understanding and the understanding we will have in the next stage. Believers are granted to know truth in this age, but only partially so. 
Our imprecise perception of Christ will be made perfect in eternity. Love is greatest virtue because it continues into the next age. Both faith and hope will be fulfilled in eternity and so will not remain. I just want to say God is good all the time. He woke me up this morning. And yes, it's cold today, but I'm still thankful that I awoke to have another day to give the Lord honor, praise, and glory in all things. I pray that he leads, guard, guides, and directs all who hear this in all things, that you put your armor on, put Satan beneath your feet, and that you be blessed in all things. And pray for those in need. So when you're asked to pray, pray. It's important. A lot of prayers are strength. Just remember, God loves all. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Terry for participating uh, please remember this testimony line after midnight tonight will be dead uh, we shared Brother Willie's you'll be able to call his and share testimonies and things like that you can dial one 681 8098 we do appreciate you taking time to call and participate amen may God continue to bless you praise God that was one of the one of the things that they um, that the world comes against those of us that walk in the gift of tongues uh, they say you know you don't do it uh, you know because um, well let me get into that just in a minute <laughs> amen but thank God you brought that to my attention yeah, the Lord used that to bring that back up. But knowing that uh, Jesus is not come yet again, his second coming, he's on his way, ain't he? He that is perfect is coming. And there ain't one perfect, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen? And he's on his way. Like it or not, believe it or not, ready or not, he's coming. You know, uh, what I would advise people that, you know, doesn't speak in tongues. Now, listen, there's a false doctrine going around saying, well, everybody's got to speak in tongues or you don't go to heaven. Well, now, that ain't right neither. You know, that's not true. But as we're going to find out if we get that far down into tonight uh, with the, the five things I need to answer first. Now, there's many. With, this could go on and on and on. But I'm trying to deal with the five that I got through the email. So pray for me that I stay focused and in, in, in on that and get those settled. Because I know they listen on the sidelines. And uh, <clears throat> I told them I would try to answer these. So to the best of the ability, being led by God, we're going to try to do that. Uh, along the program tonight amen all right god bless you're awesome sister terry hey if you guys want to meet her in person along with brother bobby bohannon saturdays at 5 p.m central time right here at 219 red fox drive crossville tennessee they come and do a bible study right here at the soul filling station worship center we try to broadcast that and get it out on the airways so you can jump in amen and be blessed uh, uh, as they share and break the word of god all right <clears throat> Let me share this, and we'll be right back. Hello, Brother Bishop Eddie Cheney. We love you, and we're praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho, and I called in some calls earlier, and uh, we've been real busy here. We've got a lot of snowstorms and stuff and people to take care of. We've been doing a lot of snow removal here. A guy named Joe's been, Joel has been over here uh helping me, and he sends his greetings to uh, all of you, and we thank all everyone that's helped us out here. My dad, Roy London, uh, passed away on us. Uh, he had high blood pressure, wouldn't see the doctors, wouldn't take blood pressure medicine on the day they were going to start the preschool program in the fall after the summer was over. They got up early about 4 in the morning because they have to drive a long ways, almost 100 miles to where the church is. He took some caffeine pills that caused him to have a stroke, and that led to him getting infections and him passing away on us, unfortunately, and... Uh, when he did pass away, the pastor was there, and many people from the church were there singing praise songs to him, and Jesus came down and took him up to heaven when he passed away, so he's up there in heaven now. But I called in earlier about the speaking in tongues stuff. I can speak in tongues, I can sing in tongues, and it doesn't sound like a static utterance, it's like it's in a different language, like in the book of Acts it talks about there. But I've had people that are religious tell me that uh, uh, you're going to go to hell because tongues are from the devil, citing that scripture that when the perfect comes, the imperfect will go away, saying that we have the Word of God now in the Bible, and tongues and miraculous gifts are done away with now. Some say that. Some say if you don't speak in tongues, you aren't saved and you aren't going to heaven. Uh, some say that, too. There's the tongue-talking group that says if you don't speak in tongues, then you aren't saved. But all I know that um, no matter whether you speak in tongues or not, Jesus calls us 
to follow him, to go make disciples of all nations, to teach them to obey everything and baptize them. And he's looking for a few good men and women that want to surrender their hearts to him and have him as their personal Lord and Savior. And he wants to use us to go out there and spread the good news of Jesus to a lost and dying world. Whether we speak in tongues or not, Jesus wants us wants to use us to spread the good news of Jesus to a lost and dying world. There's this song here I read before. It says, There are hungry souls who cry aloud for bread. With the bread of life, they're longing to be fed. Shall they starve and famish? Well, the beast is free. Lord, they must not, cannot. Here am I, send me. And that needs to be our heart. Lord, here am I, send me. There's people dying, dying in drug addictions and drug use and horrible sins. And if we go out there and preach Jesus to them, let them know the good news about Jesus, the Son of God, dying on their cro the cross for their sins, that their sins can be forgiven, and Jesus can help them repair their sins, we can help people get saved and make it to heaven. So we got to go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation and let everyone know the good news of Jesus. He can. Jesus can set us free from sins, can heal us from sicknesses and diseases, can deliver us from trials and challenges. I'm telling you, Jesus died on the cross for you. He loves you. Please turn your life over to Jesus if you haven't. God bless all. We love you. Amen. I can't take a heart that's broken, make it over again.
Woo, praise God. Amen. Hey, uh, you can look there. Some of you done a note, but there in Acts 2, verse 39, uh, Peter proclaiming that the gift of tongues is for everyone who is called uh, by God. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God would call. And there in 1 Corinthians 13, I believe it's verse 8, eight and 9, where it's talking about uh, 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 Sister uh, Terry was quoting some of it earlier there when it was talking about which is perfect comes, tongues will cease. That is a reference uh, to the second coming of Christ. The Bible teaches that uh, no one is perfect except Jesus. When Christ returns, we will not need to speak in tongues to uh, communicate with God because we'll be with him. But until then, the gift of tongues is available uh, to any believer who desires it. If you pray, you, you have not because you ask not. If you lack wisdom in this area. Now listen, you, I'm not telling you that you got to speak in tongues to go to heaven because that's not true. The Holy Ghost gives out the gifts. Amen. Uh, but it is a promise. And uh, hey, I like what I seen earlier there when Tom, uh, I just caught a little bit of it. Uh, talking about when you when you pray in tongues, it clears your mind to uh, hear from God. Hey, man, I believe that something similar to that. I, I don't want to quote it because it got by me uh, there in the chat room. But um, <clears throat> the truth is, now, no matter if you spoke, you know, I believe Paul said he spoke in tongues more than all. But, but. Now, it don't matter. If you ain't got love, it don't matter what spiritual gifts you got. If you ain't got love, you ain't got nothing. You know, if you ain't got love, you ain't got a thing, my friend. I mean, you, listen, if you can't love, love. If you can't love those who despitefully use you. If you can't love your enemy. If you can't forgive people. If you can't reach out a helping hand. If you can't feed the hungry, clothe the naked. Jesus said what you've done under the least of mine, you've done unto me. If you can't do love, if you don't know love, you don't know God. And if you can't express love, you ain't got love. Love has to be expressed. It, it motivates faith. You have to have love first and foremost because God is love. And love, love, love. You know, so love, love, love. But, you know, just sharing with you, just because you don't understand a, a gift in the Word of God, be careful what you speak against. That's all I'm saying to people. You know, now I know there's mockers out there. Come on. The Antichrist spirit's running around. We know the devil's real. There's people that claim to be saved that ain't saved. There's people that uh, claim that God gives them prophecy and interpretation of tongues, and they don't get no interpretation. They, 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 we know there's false people out there. We know this. But if you're born again, bathed in the blood, the Spirit of God bears witness one with another. It really does. It does. And if it don't feel love, if it don't see love, <laughs> brother, you ain't got love. You know what I'm saying? You can have all the others, but you better have love. First and foremost, it better be number one in your life, God. He's not going to play second fiddle. He ain't going to be third, fourth, or fifth. He better be number one in your life. And just because you, listen, have you ever seen anybody with the gift of healing? Man, I have. They don't heal everyone in the room, but being led of the Spirit of God, they go to those that God has directed them to go to, and the Spirit of healing manifests. I've seen blinded eyes. I'm talking about with doctor statement. They're blind, can't see nothing. My son's one of them. He'll tell you the testimony. The world told him, the doctors told him, you'll never see, you'll never do nothing. Hey, he works, and you know what he does for a living? He runs a chainsaw. He works in the tree business, my friends. He cuts down and loads trees for a living. And the world said when he was a baby, he would never be able to do nothing. So don't believe the report of the world. Whose report you going to believe anyway? Stand on the word of God and the promises of God. But if you're in a place where you don't know the, 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 what's going on at a church service or what's happening, pray. Pray. I can guarantee you there have been many a times that you've been in a service where somebody's preached the word of God and you didn't like it. You didn't get nothing from it. You didn't understand a one iota of it. It wasn't for you at that moment. Your ears was blocked. Do you hear me? It was for, listen, God's word don't return void. It accomplishes what he sends it forth to do. It was for the recipient. 
<clears throat> now, you got to understand, there on the day of Pentecost, now, you know, everybody says, well, it had to be, you know, when they were uttering in different languages. No, they was not uttering in different languages already known to man. Even though everyone there understood, but everyone there didn't understand. They teach that. They say that. That everyone that heard, you got to say that heard, then they understood in their language. There was two gifts happening there, two things happening, two miracles happening right there. That was the gift of the new tongues, amen, the tongues that they shall speak in. They, there's the gift, and then the gift of hearing and being able to interpret, but not all interpreted, not all heard because they was a bunch standing around mocking them, making fun of them, said these men are drunk. So when you don't understand something, you pray and you seek God. Be careful what you come against. Just because you don't understand it, don't make it wrong. See, just like just like uh, the gift of healing or the gift of prophecy. <clears throat> My God, if you've been in a place where you saw the gift of healing manifest, then you know that was of God. Your spirit, if you're born again, bathed in the blood, bared witness. And you wasn't afraid of it, and you didn't come against it. Now, those that don't, that didn't, don't have that discerning spirit, man, they come against it. They say, well, that's a con. You know, he's trying to fleece somebody's money. He's going to get something for like Now, everybody ain't got the gift of healing. Do all speak in tongues? Do all prophesy? Do all? Uh, no. No, there's many members in the body of Christ. Many, 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 all around the world. All around the world. Hey, man, if you if you ain't moving in, in an area in your life and you don't have the gift of whatever it may be, we'll say the gift of healing, elbow quit trying to be the finger, and finger quit trying to be the mouth. I, you better not try to be the ear because it ain't going to work out too good. Do you hear me? Be what God's called you to be. Be content right there where God's got you placed into the body of Christ. Seek out gifts, pray and ask God fast and get in commune with God. We'll be right back. Be blessed. One of these mornings won't be long. You're going to miss me singing the song You're going to look up here for me And I'll be gone When I hear a favorite sound I'm going to step to high ground Leave all my earthly cares behind me When I rise, when I rise. Nothing here is going to hinder me When his face I finally see Just one moment I'm going to be like this Processional in the sky The roads and crowds are all in place Waiting for the million save a grace The bridegroom's anxious for that moment to arrive Now nothing here is gonna hinder me When his face I finally see Just one moment I'm gonna be like him when I rise Let's go. 
God is awesome. <laughs> Praise God. All right. God bless Tom Long. He says, glory. I've got to get some rest. Prayer meeting before the sun comes up. Y'all be blessed. Amen. Be blessed, my friend. Be blessed. Praise God. I believe Sister Angie went up through the chat room. I didn't get a shout. Howdy. Man, it's moving good in the chat room tonight. You guys are on fire. Just loving one another all up. And I love that. I believe, yeah, uh, uh, Brother Tom there was saying, seek the best gift, love. Amen. If you've got love, you got it all, my friend. Love the first, 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 and most important thing we can get, realize we've got, and operate in it. Because without it, hey, we ain't got nothing. You know what I mean? I mean, you could have all the other gifts. But if you ain't got love, you're in trouble. I believe that's what them people didn't have when they hear Jesus say, Depart from me, for I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. But they say, Oh, didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we all do all these wonderful things uh, in thy name? But he never knew them. Because without love, you, you're you none of God. Without love, you don't even know God. Amen. But just sharing some stuff tonight throughout the, the program about uh you know, is speaking in tongues from God or the devil? I was asked the question. I'm trying to answer. I was asked five, actually, and I'm going to try to stay focused and get those answered to the best of my ability, the best that I can. As we're sharing testimony, song, hey, we're just worshiping the Lord tonight in spirit and truth, for truly we love God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Sister Angie says, uh, awesomeness. Yeah, I can't already say that word. Cool. Cannot... Uh, uh, can not live without God's love. Amen. That's right. Can't do it. We'd be dead in a minute. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> God bless uh, Brother Tom Long there. He says, grace and peace unto you all. Amen. God bless. All right. Let's get over here and check the testimony line, and uh, we'll get right back in the program. Praise God. Hello, this is Brother Boyd London in Idaho. We love you all. We're praying for you, and God bless you. And uh, I'm busy with doing stuff here. We've had a lot of snow removal to do, and a ton of snowstorms. There's a lot of snow here, and we've been real busy. But uh, I've been trying to make some calls into this line. It looks like they're going to maybe be doing a program about speaking in tongues. And I've actually had uh, religious people tell me that I'm of the devil, and I'm going to go to hell because I can speak in tongues. I can speak in tongues. I can sing in tongues, and it doesn't sound like a static utterance. It sounds just like I'm speaking in some type of another language, just like in the book of Acts, where it talks about that there. But this is the scripture they use. Uh, this is actually a good scripture, too, this first one. This is 1 Corinthians 13. It says, Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will fail. Where there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will be vanished away. For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but that's when this is perfect. When but that which is perfect has come, and that which is in part will be done away with. And uh, there's another scripture up here. Oh, this is uh, this is what I was thinking of. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. And it's saying that we saying that we have to have love. But it goes on here. It talks about the uh, when the perfect has come. And I've had people tell me that one of the that they had to have tongues and miracles and miraculous healings in the book of, or, or uh, when the first believers were gathered to believe that Jesus was the Son of God, they needed miracles. When Jesus was alive and after he was resurrected, the apostles had to do miracles so the people would believe that, that Jesus is there. And then they say that after the Word of God came and that we have the Bible, we no longer need the miracles, so there's no more healings, they say. And they say that there's no more pro tongue speaking. It all went away. And they say if you speak in tongues nowadays, it's from the devil. And if you speak in tongues, you're going to hell. So hopefully that's not true because I can uh, I can speak in tongues. And I confess Jesus as Lord, as my Lord. And I was also baptized in a lake. And I've been involved helping different churches to grow, helping father and orphanless, orphan fatherless and orphan kids for many years, we've been helping people in the prison systems. We've seen people turn their lives over to Jesus and get set free from severe drug addictions and sins. Dusty Moyers here was in the gangs and on drugs. We shared our testimony with him. We've been praying with him and working with him for a couple of years. He's been drug free for a couple of years, and we've been used by Jesus to be able to help share the good news of Jesus to a lost and dying world. But a lot of the religious people just like to argue about this tongue stuff and a lot of different things. 
And they don't know a lot of people. They didn't even want to help Dusty in the churches here. We had to help Dusty ourselves. He was a real mess. But anyhow, uh, Jesus loves you and God loves you. And remember that Jesus died on the cross where you can have forgiveness of your sins. Please turn your heart and life over to Jesus. He'll forgive your sins and you can go to heaven. Jesus loves you. God bless all and have a good day. Amen. Amen, Brother Boyd. Thank you for sharing. Praise God. Brother Boyd, please, if you hear the program uh, after tonight at midnight, try to direct all your testimony calls over to Brother Willie's line. I'll be uh, sharing his program here in uh, one of our new programs, which is an old one, in the pulpit. And I'll still get your your testimonies for the uh, CD uh, that way. But um, I've had to make a decision because I'm I'm really getting a lot of things to do. I see here where Sister Shirley says, I'll sure miss you, Brother Eddie. Thank you for your uh, love and compassion for me and my family. Uh, Sister Shirley, I'm, I'm just taking a little time off from, from uh, ministering while I'm praying through about some thoughts that I have concerning the radio ministry. Uh, I, the radio will still be on uh, every night at 7 p.m. Central Times. And as I get prayed through, I'll be back teaching and preaching. I'm not quitting. I'm not retiring. Nothing like that. Uh, it's, I, 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 I think I messed up a little bit. And I'm I'm repenting and praying of that and getting that in order. There's some things I need to be doing in the direction of the radio ministry that I've I've kind of pushed back, and I and I really shouldn't have pushed them back. Um, but but that's that's you know thank you for your prayers. But but know that I'm not going nowhere. Um, the radio will still be beaming. Matter of fact, we're growing. We're sharing more programs. We're going to be finally trying to transition the radio part of the ministry into 24/7 around the clock amen i'll be sharing uh saving america uh one soul at a time uh, evangelist chris cheney will be sharing his programs that he does uh we're going to be sharing brother willie there uh, evangelist willie grizzle out of scottsville kentucky there at the house of prayer we're going to be sharing um um uh, consumed by fire ministry, brother Greg. We're going to be uh, uh, many other ministers. Uh, I've got a lot of people that's giving me CDs uh, of their ministries. I'll be sharing them. So you want to check out the new program, um, which is an old program I was testing a while back. If you guys remember, those of you that follow along for a while, you remember I was doing a program called In the Pulpit. And that was me testing how much, what I could do and what I couldn't, and how much help I would get to fill these airways. Amen. So the gospel music jukebox, is, it's still going to be here. It's not going nowhere. It's just me personally that uh, as I pray and fast and seek the face of God, I'll be taking a couple of nights off from ministering what time I'm doing that. Tonight will be my last ministering program for a little while. But you guys will know I'll make an announcement when I'm uh, done fasting, praying, and seeking, and getting all my answers that only God can give me, amen, and get, get everything back in line with the radio ministry right here uh, every everything's growing and, and doing real good so please know to pray for us um, um, that that we need laborers I, I need I need God to send people to help with this radio program they've been a lot of radio programs birthed out of this and 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 that's awesome and I thank God for each one of them and now I get to use them to help fill the air ways and and now I see that that was God's plan and, and purpose but I sure need God to send some laborers right here to the to the studio right here uh, at the gospel music jute box. Yeah, the little red building, <laughs> amen, uh, that, that just got a heart for radio, a heart to fill these airways with the gospel that can help get this office in order, run these programs. We can all do our part and, and keep this thing going 24-7. Like I said, it's not a one-man radio program. It's not a one-man ministry. No, this is not a one-man move of God. It's a body of Christ move, and uh, I truly do need those that uh, are in the area and are able to come and, and just obey God. Um, if, if you're listening tonight and you have a desire to get into gospel radio, please get a hold of me. Uh, amen. You can call the live number. Uh, it's one nine three one two five zero four three six six. Anytime we're on the air, and uh, or just drive out here to two nineteen Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, um, and get up with me. And uh, man, we'll get you in here if you can give an hour a day. If you can give three hours a day, hey, whatever you can give to the work of the Lord 
and helping us to uh, get this out and fill these airways with the gospel, the good news of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we, w- we want you to come do that. Amen. So we want to offer, offer that up. The door is open here. Amen. We want you to come and simply obey God. Uh, we're being blessed on weekends. The Soul Filling Station Worship Center is growing. It's blessed. Uh, Pastor Eddie Garrett is just uh, on fire, uh, simply uh, allowing liberty to be here. Amen. There's liberty. God here there's liberty uh we encourage you to come and and just uh obey god but not only for that now i need people monday through friday you know to be to i'm I'm asking god to send people with a radio heart uh you know to help get this gospel out amen we need we need that uh amen i i can't do it but so many hours i fall asleep you know what i'm saying <laughs> somebody got to put the cd in somebody got to sign it in and somebody got to keep getting it out we want to fill the airways i i believe i don't know about you guys but i really believe that uh we're in the end days and we're running out of time I really do, and their souls hanging in the balance. And I think everything we can do as a ministry to fill these airways, we we should take. We should do that. We should do that. It ain't just about me preaching or you preaching. It's about us, the body of Christ, those that are called and ordained by God. We we're, we're encouraging you. If you, if you got CDs, if you've got cassette tapes that you would love to uh, help us fill these airways with, just simply mail them to us right here at 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, and we're going to put them on the air. We're going to play them right there in the pulpit. Uh check out the new program stay up with it um it's going to be filling in between but now the gospel music jukebox will be on live as long as i'm alive <laughs> and can get internet service i may not be preaching on it personally but i'll sign it in or somebody will be here to sign it in and it's going to be broadcasting live uh just like it is right now uh that part's not changing every night at 7 p.m lords of willing right here at 7 p.m. Central Time, the Gospel Music Jukebox will be on the air. Uh, along with uh, Tuesday Night Bible Study, that's not changing. It's staying the same. Evangelist Chris Cheney, he's coming. he comes over here to the studio, and he uh, teaches Bible study. They may change that later, you know, but uh, right as, as far as I know, right now, that part's still the same. Uh, we're just going through some changes and, and working hard here at the ministry to try to fill this 24-hour, 7-day-a-week, 365, days a year uh, up with the gospel with the good news of Jesus Christ so if you know any ministers hey and they got CDs cassette tapes uh, you know uh, tell them to please uh, mail them to us here at 219 Red Fox Drive Crossville Tennessee maybe you want to talk to your pastors and get them involved Uh, you know it's free we're going to put them on the air, tell them to be sure to give all the information of where they're at. Uh, if people want to write them, be sure they give their mailing information, uh, you know, and their services and times. If people listen close in that area, hey, they could come out and be with you. Amen. But the main thing is to, we're asking people to pray, seek God, and get involved. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. That's that's what we're, we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to, to get other people that's called of God and ordained to come and help us right here at the Gospel Music Jute Box. Um, you know, and it, it may be that I, I never get no help. It may be that maybe I'm just supposed to help people get started in radio and, and they can go on. Maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. If it is, I'll know by the time I get this stuff prayed through, and I'll do that. I'll, I'll do that. I just want to do what God would have me to do, and I, I want to see these airways filled up with the with the glory of God. Amen. There are souls hanging in the balance. I mean, there's enough garbage out there. We want to fill it up with the Word of God. Praise God. That That's my, my desire for the radio ministry here from Saving America One Soul at a Time. you got to understand, that radio ministry is an outreach from saving America one soul at a time. And, uh, uh, man, God gave me a vision to fill these airways. And I'm definitely going to keep trying and, and, uh, praying until I get that accomplished. I'm not going to give up on it, but, um, you know, I just can't focus 
on praying and getting the sermons and praying at the same time the sermon on the decisions that I've got to make and things. So please utilize Brother Willie's testimony line, especially after midnight. This one will be shut off. Uh, the only phone I'll have is the live phone coming into the programs. So you're always welcome to use that. You're always welcome to call in live right here at one nine three one two five zero four three six six, and uh, you know just obey God. Amen. I hope that explained all that a little better. Uh, you know because it, it, it's not a bad thing right now. It's just something I, I think I got a few faults that I got to let God get out of me. The Bible says confess your faults one to another, and uh, you know. Uh, so I'm trying to do that to the best of my ability. Uh, but uh, I do need your prayers. Uh, thank you for being patient with us, growing with us. My God, we would, I mean, you're part of this. Every one of you that stop by and listen, that pray for us. Uh, some of you support us financially. Some of you support us with prayers and finances. And some of you just show up and support us in that way. Thank God for each and every one of you. You're important. Every one of us has a part to do right here on the Gospel Music Jukebox. Some is praying. Some is just uh, uh, sharing the program. Some is typing in scriptures. My God. Ooh, you guys are such a blessing. You are. You're awesome. The children of God. Praise God. All right, guys, let me get back into the program. Give this a listen. Be blessed, and we'll be right back.
Hallelujah. I want the whole world to know that this is a blood-bought church. The church of the redeemed.
Praise God. The blood bought. Amen. God is awesome. And besides him, there is none other, my friend. Amen. One of the questions asked to me was, uh, you know, well, what good is tongues? Well, you know, I mean, I really prayed about that because immediately my mind went to he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Look there in 1 Corinthians 14 and 4. And, um, you know, do you, I mean, and believe it or not, they didn't even know what edified meant. Um, you know, they, they didn't know. I mean, the word edify means to build up or charge up. And, and come on, most, uh, most, uh, like, um, well, you know, much like, let's say charging up a battery. We all need a spiritual charge every now and then. All of us at a time feel, well, spiritually drained. And one of God's ways to charge your spirit is through speaking in tongues. Hmm, interesting. That, that's what I felt. And, you know, so that's where my, my, my spirit led me right away. Right there was he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Now, if you go on down, of course, you can read there in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 5, I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied, for greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. I hope that helped you. The Word of God always helps you if you receive it. Amen. But I know that there's times myself that when I'm in my prayer closet and I'm speaking a heavenly language that uh, God is charging me up. He's, he's restoring my, 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 my spirit man, the spirit side. Amen. As he's, well, charging up my batteries, let's just say. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, guys. Give this a listen. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Brother Boyd London in Idaho. We love you all. We're praying for you, and God bless you. I've been trying to make some calls in today to get the good news of Jesus out to a lost and dying world. And uh, my testimony here is that, uh, boy, it's been a brutal winter here. Uh, we just had snowstorm after snowstorm, and in some places the snow where we've plowed the driveway and stuff is up over my head. It's about four feet in the yard, and I posted some pictures on my Facebook page uh, my uh, mom and sister got their car stuck in the driveway last night, even though we were trying to shovel it, and we had to have some people come over and help them get it unstuck, and I've got some people coming over today to help us try to move that snow in the driveway and really cut it down so the cars won't get stuck. We're going to be busy working on that today. We appreciate the prayers for us here. But I just want to let people know that Jesus loves you and that there's hope through Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. He came down to earth lived and died for our sins on the cross, was raised, was raised from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of God. And he can heal us and help us no matter what we're facing. I don't have to worry about the situation with all the snow here. And I know that God is keeping us safe and that we are overcoming. The angels are watching over us and protecting us because we love Jesus here and we're not ashamed to pray for other people. And we know that by the grace of Jesus we're saved and our sins are forgiven. And uh, let me read a great scripture here. Matthew 13, verse 15, For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. And that's the heart of Jesus to heal us. It says, You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free, and we can be set free from sins with the help of Jesus. Philippians 4, 13 says, We can do all things to Christ who strengthens us. Luke 18, 27 says, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. No matter how bad the sins are in your life, Jesus can set you free and he can heal you from sicknesses and diseases. Matthew 8, 17 says Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. I was set free from so many sins. I was controlled by pornography, lust, anger, cursing, and so many sins. Jesus helped get those sins out of my life. Dusty Moyers here was in gangs and on drugs. Back in Maryland, Ohio, they moved him here. We went out and shared our testimony with him and prayed with him, brought him into our house and uh, have been helping him here. And... Uh, He's been drug free and set free from those drug addictions for a couple years, and Dusty was going to get killed in the gangs. But Dusty sends his love also and tells you that Jesus can heal you no matter how dark the sins are in your life. And uh, I just want to thank Jesus for his grace and dying on the cross for us. Now, since he died for us, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, Titus 2, 11 through 14. That should motivate us 
We say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and we should get the sin out of our life with the strength and hope of Jesus, and then it should motivate us to be that peculiar people that likes to do good works that goes out there and shares the good news of Jesus to a lost and dying world and prays for people and helps needy people. And I'm telling you that Jesus loves you. If you haven't turned your life over to him, please turn your life over to Jesus. God bless all. Aaron. Well, he's higher than the highest mountain, deeper than the deepest sea. He's stronger than a locomotive. He's faster than a bullet speed. He's wiser than a man named Webster. Eternal needs he. Well, nothing's too big for God, no possibility.
well. Praise God. Woo, let's just praise him tonight. glory praise god hey guys listen it's speaking in tongues from god or the devil you know too many people inaccurately define speaking in tongues as well speaking uh, gibberish or talking nonsense the truth is speaking in tongues is the most intelligent perfect language in the universe it is it's god's language i mean think of it what language do you suppose people speak in heaven now, languages are given their name based on the countries they come from. For example, English comes from England. Uh, what is it? Spanish uh, comes from Spain. Uh, Italian comes from Italy. Yeah, think about it. Well, where does tongues come from? It comes from heaven. Tongues is the, the, the heavenly language. It, it, is, it is what is spoken in heaven. The only difference is that the people in heaven understand what they are saying. Here on earth, Paul says, for anyone who speaks in tongues does not speak to man, but speaks to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries within his spirit. My goodness, my goodness, I want you to think about it. Jesus says this is that those who believe in him will speak in new tongues. Look there in Mark 16, 17, what I shared with you at the beginning of the program, the beginning of this topic. The word new means, well, appearing for the first time. No one had spoken this language before, my friends. Contrary now to bad uh, theological uh, teaching on uh, tongues is not an ability uh, given to preach the gospel in, in um, the language of foreigners. That's not what tongues is. This would make tongues old language. It only, it's only appropriate that new tongues should be spoken by those of the new birth. It, it, it's natural and normal to speak in the language of your birth. We are born again from above, therefore we should speak the language from above. The language is called new tongues. Now, are there mockers and people that make fun and people that lie? Sure they are. But think about it for just a moment. See, the first to speak in tongues were, were the disciples. You know, that occurred on the day of Pentecost there. People often think that on this day, the disciples were speaking human languages because the people could understand what they were saying, my friend. But I don't believe this. I don't believe it to be true. Because there was a twofold miracle taking place on this day that we're talking about the day of Pentecost, there really was the miracle of speaking and hearing. You see, the first miracle was the speaking in tongues. The second miracle was the enabling of some to understand the tongues. Now, not everyone understood the tongues because, well, some onlookers made fun of the disciples and accused them of being drunk. Look there in Acts chapter 2, verse 13. I mean, to me, this clearly shows that they did not understand the tongues. 
So on those bases, it you know, it's not a known man language. That would be a language of old. This is new that we're talking about, this heavenly language. You see, and the ones who, who didn't understand the tongues were perplexed because each one of them heard only their own native language, not the language of the other people. You can see that there in verse 6. You know, the Bible tells us that there was over, uh, what, it, what was it? I believe 14 foreigners representing many nations, speaking different languages, yet each person heard the disciple praising God in their own language. They exclaimed, how, how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? You see, they could not figure out how this was possible. Now, it is clear that the disciples were not preaching the gospel in tongues. They were instead declaring the wonders of God. They were not speaking to men, but to God. Look at 1 Corinthians there, uh, 14 verse 2. You see, the people were simply listening in on their uh, praise to God. It, it wasn't until Peter stood up to speak to the crowd, you know, in one common language that the gospel was preached. So tongues are not supernatural human languages given to the apostles so that they could preach in languages that they did not naturally learn. The disciples were not speaking human language. They were speaking in unknown tongues. But God enabled those whose hearts were open to understand what the disciples were saying. Sometimes this happens today, my friend. You see, the miracle was in the hearing of the people. I hope we've answered the question, is speaking in tongues from God or of the devil we know the devil mocks. We know that there's people that absolutely are not born of God. The false prophets, the Antichrist spirits is out there among us even now as we speak. We know that there's people that, that mock the gift of tongues. There's people that mock the gift of healing. There's people that fleeces the people of God as they pray for them and tell them to give heave offerings into the buckets that they pass around in big healing services. But nobody gets healed. But when someone with the gift of healing is present and the gift manifests, they get healed. And the Spirit of God bears witness one with another. Be careful and pray and discern, for there are many spirits that come at us. So try the spirits and see if it be of God. But just because you don't walk in a gift, you shouldn't speak against it. The same way, if you know a, a deep revelation of a particular verse and someone that is just learning the Word of God, someone that is, is a babe in Christ, someone that just got saved three days ago, they may not understand what you're talking about. That does not make them wrong. How long has it took you to grow to where you're at? Did it happen overnight for you? Huh. I mean, you didn't know everything immediately? Oh, my goodness. Come on, you expect everyone else to. You mean you've been serving God how many years? One year, three years, five years, 20 years, and you got to where you're at right now through and by the grace and the mercies of God. Listen, we got to remember that we're the clay and he's the potter and he's shaping us into what he would have us to be. But just because people's not where you're at in your walk with God and your understanding, your level of interpretation and uh, understanding, everybody's not the same. Look here, the toe don't know what the hand knows and the hand don't know what the eyeball knows. No, it don't. It has to be uh, one part connects to another one and it makes the whole body function. You understand? I hope you do. Hope we've answered and helped you. I hope we stirred up the gift of God that lies within you and you go further in the word. If we've not helped you tonight by stirring up the gift of God that lies within you, I pray, I pray that God sends someone by your way tonight or as quickly as, as he possibly can and help you get this finished and settled in your life. And if you're one of those making fun of people because they do speak in tongues, be careful. 
Just because you don't understand something, just because God hasn't bestowed that gift upon you doesn't mean that it's not there. It's still here. Listen, Jesus is not come yet the second time. If he has, we're in trouble. But he is coming. He's on his way. Now, when he that, that gets here, that's perfect. When he comes and we walk with him, we don't need that gift. We don't need none of them gifts, do we? Think about it. But I love what Brother Tom said. If you're, if you're hung up on it and you're one of them that says, well, you know, if nobody don't speak in tongues, they ain't going to heaven. Huh. It don't say that. So you shouldn't say that. And we better learn to love one another and pray for one another. And those of us that are elders in the body of Christ, we should teach the younger by being a walking, talking example of the Word of God. Brother Bobby Bohannon in the chat room, man, I love what he said earlier there about uh, Brother Greg speaking in tongues Saturday night would put cold chills on anyone. Amen. Uh, we shared that video of our worship service here Saturday, and, man, we were honored to have uh, the man of God come up out of Cookville, Tennessee, Brother Greg Dotson from Consumed by Fire Ministries, and God moved on him. And, man, what an awesome time we had in the Lord. And uh, then Brother Bobby says, uh, I, I wish I could speak in tongues. Amen. Well, you will. You seek it. You'll get it. I'm telling you. Amen. I, I know there's times that I, that I have. Uh, I do more in my prayer closet than I do openly. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm I'm kind of where Paul is. You know, I'd rather speak in a, a language people understand. But but now, you know, out in the open in the public. But God has moved on me during services and street preaching, and I have uh, you know spoken in, in the unknown tongue. And um, I know that God's real, and I know that the Spirit of God is real, and uh, I know that um, they come from heaven if it's the real tongues. Now I do know that there is a mocker out there and his name is the devil and i do know that everything that jumps don't necessarily mean it's got god amen but you pray if you're born again bathed in the blood of christ if you're sold out to god you pray if you lack wisdom in any area you pray and ask the wisdom giver but now seek ye the first most important gift which is what love Look here, I I mean, if you ain't got love, you could speak in tongues all day. And if you ain't got love, you ain't got God. That's a fact. We'll be right back.
Praise God. What an awesome God we do serve. All right, guys, I hope we've helped answer those questions that I was emailed. If not, man, just check us on other programs. I'm sure we'll be talking about this topic again, is speaking in tongues from God or the devil. Well, for me, the real tongues, the heavenly language, the new tongues is from God. And, yeah, like like Brother Bobby said here in the, the chat room, he says, I've heard people speaking in tongues, and you could tell that God was not with them. Does that make sense? Sure it does. Everybody that packs a Bible ain't right with God. Amen. But we know those that confess Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. The only way that can be said is through and by the Spirit of God. So we know that the, then that God is, is working in their lives. So there is a mocker, and his name is the devil. That's who's going around mocking everything that the Lord does. Amen. So we know that there's pretenders, uh, wannabes, could bees, but uh, they're not where they need to be. Amen. Now we know that. So try the spirits that come at you because many come at you and see which ones are of God, my friend. How do you try a spirit of God? Well, if it don't line up with the word of God, it's not of God. Amen. You simply, if they cannot confess that Jesus Christ is their personal Lord and Savior, then they're not of God. If they don't believe that God came, listen, that Jesus came and died, yeah, the death, burial, and resurrection. If, if they try to tell you Jesus didn't come, listen, that, that's an antichrist spirit. Man, you, you get away and pray about that. Amen. But God is real. He's alive, and he's working in the lives of his people. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, God has opened up the windows of heaven and pouring out blessings upon his people. I'd like to ask you to remember uh, Sister Rachel tonight as she goes through uh, whatever this is that God is leading them through concerning her unborn child. Uh, I also ask you to remember Brother Philip Williamson up there in Pikeville, Kentucky. Remember Sister Shirley Collins and her blood pressure. She's got doctor appointments tomorrow. We're praying to, to receive an awesome praise report out of that. Just uh, standing on the word and the promises of God. Remember me when you pray. 
as I'm trying to get myself in line with uh, what God has called me to do with the radio end of this ministry. Uh, hey, please pray for the new program in the pulpit that God would send plenty of ministers, amen, whether it be by cassette or CD or uh, whether they call in live and, and, and uh, minister a live program. We just want to give them an opportunity to help us fill these airways with the gospel, the good news of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So guys, know that I love you. If I've missed any prayer requests, I'm sorry. Uh, remember all the prayer requests over on uh, Consumed by Fire Ministry uh, Camp Meeting Radio. Uh, remember all the prayer requests there at Brother Willie Grizzle, House of Prayer. Uh, and rem remember all those that come through right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. Let me get over here and answer the phone. Uh, hello, you've got the Gospel Music Jukebox. Who do we have on that end? Hey, Brother Eddie, you've got me, Sister Terry. Ooh. I just wanted to let you know that from your message tonight, I just wanted to say that the allegiance to Jesus as exclusive Lord is made possible only through the working of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Amen. Amen. And that the Spirit, according to His will, distributes a diversity of gifts to the body for its common benefit. Amen. And it's important about this. The same God brings about a variety of gifts and manifests diverse ministries and activities within the unified corporate body, which sets the body of Christ, okay? Amen. They reflect the essential unity and the unified work of the persons of the Godhead. The same Spirit, the same Lord, the same God. Manifestation of the Spirit refers to gifts, ministries, and activities made possible by the Spirit's enabling power. Each is given by God for the mutual benefit of the whole body of believers. Yes. <clears throat> the Spirit works supernaturally through a diversity of gifted people to produce one cohesive relationship. Thank you, Lord. Uh -huh, amen. Amen. Christ is compressed language for the body of Christ. It, it's not just, in, you know, individuals. It's the body. We yeah. make up his body. Amen. So we become identified as one body of Christ, okay? Yes. yes. And uh, you can get in Corinthians, and uh, you can go through 12, 13, uh but when you get over in 13, charity never fails, and that's talking about love, okay? Amen. It doesn't matter what we do, if it's not accompanied by love, the ability to speak all earthly and even celestial languages would be unbearable to others, like, you know, misuse yeah. musical instruments, you know, it hurts your ears, okay? Yeah. Supreme spirituality that is not motivated and directed by charity is useless. <laughs> so we all need to remember we need to keep love. Love should be in all things that we do. Amen. No matter what. Amen. Whether you're blessed with the gift of speaking in tongues, blessed with the gift of healing, uh, blessed being able to preach, sing, teach. All of this is important, and God gives all individuals a gift. Amen. And those gifts should give him honor, praise, and glory, and be thankful that he has blessed you. Yes. So that what you're saying can help convert those that are non-believers. I, I guess that's all I've got to say. Amen. Here in this age, with a sure expectation of better things to come in the next. Amen, sis. Woo. So you have a blessed night, and let's keep everybody in prayers. And uh, Sister Rachel, I, I know her heart's heavy right now, but she needs to hang on to the faith and place it in God's hands. Amen. Because he is the master healer, and I speak from experience on that. Amen. He can make all things possible, but his will has to be done in all things. Brother Philip, my prayers are with you that you have good news in the morning. You've done claimed it, and I one mind with you. I claim your healing also. Um, brother Boyd, keep the faith, my brother. Uh, God's still with you. Amen. If he leads you to it, he's going to see you through it. Oh, praise he God. He never leaves or forsakes us. Anyone else out there needing prayer, Sister Shirley? 
keep the faith also. My prayers are with you, too. Yes. They're with everybody. Oh, I, I try to include everybody in every prayer. Amen. That way I don't overlook anyone. There you go. Praise and you, God. you keep to your prayers and figure it out what it is you have to do, and God will give you the answer. Amen. Does. Amen. Amen. Everyone be blessed, and I'm going to get off here and... Uh, May we all be blessed with another day tomorrow to give him honor, praise, and glory. Yes, Lord. We love you, sis. Love you, too. Amen. <laughs> Bye-bye. Woo, glory, hallelujah. Man, we just, we're so blessed to have Brother Bobby and his wife, Sister Terry. There she was on the phone. We are so blessed to have them, that God has sent them to be a part right here at Saving America, One Soul at a Time, and the Gospel Music Jukebox. We're so blessed. God has just blessed us, amen, above and beyond what we expected, amen, to have such wonderful anointed teachers that come and help teach. Hey, every Saturday, if you want to meet them, come right here to 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, starting about 5 o'clock. They break right into the Word of God, and hey, immediately you can hang around, stay, and participate right here at the Soul Filling Station uh, Worship Center. At 7 o'clock, they just jump in with Pastor Eddie Garrett and his wife, Sister Vicki, and whomever they've invited. Different guests usually come on Saturdays, uh, hey, or whoever God sends. It could be you. Just come on, obey the Lord, and let God be God, because besides Him, there is no other, my friend. We love you. Be sure to check out our new program, In the Pulpit. I'd love to see some comments over there about uh, what you think about that type of programming. It's simply us asking other ministries to share uh, their CDs, cassettes, uh, MP3 files that we can just put up there and um, fill the airways with the gospel, the glorious good news of our precious Lord and Savior to a lost and dying world. Continue to pray for us as we pray that God continue to bless you and your family as you continue to be a blessing to others. We'll see you next time right here on the Gospel Music Jute Box. Hey, this is Bishop Eddie Cheney saying, we love you. We love you. But God loves you most that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, hey, don't worry about tongues. Don't worry about the gift of healing. Don't worry about nothing except receive the love and the gift that God wants to give you. And that is salvation through and by the blood of his only begotten son, our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Reach out, my friend. Take a hold of the unchanging hand of the great I am. Run to him. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Listen, if you go to him with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, he will in no wise cast you out, my friend. He knows you better than you know yourself. Come on, give it over to God. Come on over to the winning side. We love you. We'll see you next time. Be blessed. I came to God one night in prayer.